Hey guys, we're your host. I'm Jacob Johnson. This is Ryan Bullard, and today we're here to talk to you about excavation safety. So Ryan, if you want to go ahead and kick us off here. Uh, first, first things first. Uh, when you go, when you show up to the construction site, you should have your PPE. Uh, some of the PPE you can see for a lot of the excavation work is long pants, boots, safety glasses, high vis vest, um, noise protection, hard hat, and gloves. Um, the next, I will cover a competent person. Your competent person is normally one of those people on your site that has a lot of experience or maybe considered like the expert in that field. Um, these people are the people that are going to be around checking materials, making sure they're the right things, and say they're pre cast make sure they're cut the right places. Um, for excavation purposes, they make sure that it's, they're digging the hole in the right place and the right quantities. And then uh, hazardous atmospheres are kind of one of the things that a lot of people don't pay attention to because it's only four feet or whatever your cause is, but if it's four feet or deeper, you need to check for oxygen deficiency and hazardous atmospheres. If there is an oxygen deficiency of 19.5% or lower, you need to have a ventilator or a breathing apparatus for them when they're working down in the hole. Um, if it is a hazardous atmosphere, you need some sort of emergency equipment so you can get them out of the hole, or if they pass out, you have a way to retrieve them from the hole safely. Oh, straight, sweet, thank you, Ryan. So throughout this presentation, we're gonna have a few questions, three actually, uh, to try to make this a little bit more interactive and make it less boring, because we know that just watching recorded lectures, it can suck sometimes. Uh, to put it lack of a better term. Uh, so what we got here, uh, the first question is, hard hats are required piece of PPE for excavations. Uh, true, false. So just take a few seconds here, phone a friend, one of your buddies beside you and, and say, hey, I think this is true because, I think this is false because, and uh, we're gonna give you the answer here. Um, if you need more time, feel free to go ahead and pause the video now, um, but we're gonna go ahead and just roll through the answer for you. So the, the answer is true. And, you know, just like Ryan touched on, all PPE is required for excavations. You know, there's no exception to the rule here. Uh, you know, you need to have your hard hat, your safety glasses, high vis vest, boots, pants, and even like you mentioned with hazardous atmospheres, things you can't see, you might need a respirator too. So be sure to keep that in mind and, and rely on your competent person for that information. So next what we're gonna talk about here is protective systems uh, for excavations. Um, we're, again, we're gonna go through this pretty quick. So. If you have any, if you want further detail, I guess I should say, then feel free to visit OSHA's website. They have plenty of information, uh, more than you could ever dream of. So feel free to visit their website and dig into some more information. Also, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, so what we got here is we got slope it short shielded. This is actually from OSHA's website. Um, so for protective systems, we can either slope back to soil, we can shore it up, we can shield it with trench boxes. And we're gonna get into shoring and shielding here later, but why do we need to do this? You know, and one fact that I threw in here is that one cubic yard of soil weighs 2,000 pounds, roughly, uh, two to 3,000 depending on moisture content. So, you know, that's something, that's that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. A Honda Civic weighs about 3,000 pounds, give or take. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. That's a ton to a ton and a half, uh, in other words. So if we've got a guy down in the trench, you know, and he's 10 feet down and that's 10 feet of soil above him, how many cubic yards could fall down in on this guy uh, or gal? you know, in the event of a, of a tragedy, of yeah. a tragedy of an accident. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, any excavation greater than five feet requires these systems. And uh, be sure to keep everything weighed to at least two feet from the top of your excavations. Keep it clean, keep it clear, it looks professional, and it also is safe. So make sure you do that. So sloping. Uh, I think sloping is important to define the four different types of soils that OSHA talks about. We have uh, solid rock, type A, type B, and type C soils. Uh, solid rock, just as the name insinuates, it's solid rock, it's like bedrock. You know, if you jump down to the bottom of a creek and, and you land on something hard, you're probably on bedrock. So that's what we would decide, uh, define as solid rock. And whenever you're doing this, you can go straight vertical. You can just dig straight down um, and go. No sloping required, right? Uh, it's probably gonna be a slow excavation anyway, trying to place their rock. So um, next we have type A, B, and C soils. Type A is your most stable. Type C is your least stable. Um, a type A soil, we need to slope it three quarters of a foot for every foot that we go down. Uh, type B, we need to do a one to one. And a type C, we need to do one and a half horizontal, one vertical. 
Um, so these kind of three, these are our four different types of soils the OSHA defines. Uh, now, how do you tell? Now, this is something you need to rely back on your competent person, like Brian had mentioned earlier. Uh, they're going to know. They're going to be able to tell you, right? They're an expert in the area. They've done it before. I apologize. I went back to the slide. And so they'll be able to tell you which type of soil that you're digging in. Uh, kind of a key note here, just for your knowledge, is that if the soil has been disturbed before, OSHA says it cannot be classified as a type A soil. So that automatically kicks it down to a type B. So I'm, I'm going to take a gander here and say, well, most of the soils that you're going to be digging in, uh, especially in like the commercial sector, they're going to be at least type B soils, if not C, uh, because most likely they've been disturbed before. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, moving on here, we got shoring and trench boxes. Shoring, uh, this is something where you're protecting the edge of your excavation with either some sort of timber, some sort of metal. Uh, in this picture here, we actually have timber shoring. Uh, if you've been out to the new gateway building here, they actually have some timber shoring uh, that you can go look at live, you know, and that's just right outside too. So maybe after class, you'd run by there and look at it if, if you're feeling it. But uh, shoring is something we can use. Uh, we also have trench boxes. I don't have an image of trench boxes here on this slide, but I do on the next slide. So I guess we'll, we will get some kind of look at it. Um, but trench boxes are literally a metal box that two sides are solid and two sides and the ones that I've been involved with are connected with, with bars, usually two bars. Uh, but they're left open on either end. And trench boxes are nice. Uh, they're actually favorable by a lot of pipe layers and stuff uh, that I've been involved with because you can take the trench box and you actually move it along with you as you're laying the pipe. The laborer stays in the trench box, he's protected. And the excavator can actually drag that trench box with him. Um, and so those are, those are kind of three different types of protective systems that we can use. Um, and kind of a side note here, if we get greater than 20 feet in our excavations, uh, OSHA says that we have to have our protective system designed by a professional engineer. You know, they, they just say that's something we have to do, which a lot of excavations you won't get under 20 feet, but uh, you know, for like buildings, for oh, even some pipe, I guess, you'll, you'll be down to 20 feet or deeper. So uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Maybe 20 feet isn't as deep as it seems. Next up, safe ex exits. So we talked about uh, a little bit about shoring, about trench boxes, we talked about sloping. We need to have a safe way for our guys to get out of the hole, right? Guys or gals. Um, so a safe exit, uh, it's gotta be within 25 feet of our workers and it must extend three feet above our excavation. That way, you know, when they get out, they're not just jumping up and hopscotch, you know, I mean, that, <laughs> that creates another hazard that we don't want. So uh, we need to make sure that we do that. Uh, if we're running an open excavation, that means that we can keep these ladders at least 50 feet apart. Uh, that way our workers are always within 25 feet of a ladder no matter if you know if they're not paying attention they're just working they're always within the 25 feet so that's something we need to keep in mind and, and if we get down to four feet or greater uh, we need to have some sort of a safe exit system um, again you can visit osha's website and they'll, they'll go into a lot greater detail about these safe exits so question two so question two here uh, which soil type is the least stable must be benched or sloped the greatest amount um, go ahead, take a minute, pause the video if you need more time. Uh, but remember, we have a vertical rock, we have type A, we have type B, and we have type C soils. So go ahead and decide which one it is. Look at your partner or your, your buddy and say, hey, I think it's this, I think it's that, here's why. All right, so uh, the correct answer would be type C. Remember, we got vertical rock, obviously that's straight rock, we can go vertical, but type A is the most stable kind of soil probably close to your clays, and type C is your least stable kind and needs to be sloped back further. So that's something just to keep in mind. The last thing I will cover is open trench safety or leaving them open overnight. Uh, one of the biggest things is you should have fencing going around the whole hole or trench itself, and they should have uh, signs just like I have up here where it says deep excavation or excavation keep out. This will keep the pedestrians and people just knowing and tell them basically that this is a construction area to keep out. Um, another thing is you need to have these signs out um, kind of regularly around the site. So if anyone's uh, using heavy machinery, they can see the fence or see the signs that says this is where I need to stop and this is where the excavation starts. So that itself is a very, very big part because they can't see a lot of where they're maneuvering of some of those places. So we got one last question here to kind of round out our, our quick toolbox talk here. Uh, what describes a competent person? So kind of guys, this is back towards the beginning of the presentation. So uh, go ahead, take a partner, pause if you need more time, uh, explain to them what you think a competent person is, uh, what they should be, what kind of
kind of things they should fill out. Uh, and so if you need more time, pause on some time. But what we got here is, is prior experience, confident, and they're an expert in the field, right? So they've likely, they've had that experience, they've been there, done that, they're confident in the decisions that they make, and they're an expert in what they're doing. And being an expert and having that prior experience gives them confidence on their decisions that they're making. So again, I'm, I'm Jacob Johnson. I'm Ryan. Uh, we appreciate your time, and, and hey, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.